Hello, it's Trouble TCAT here, recording for the Zombie Arcade, and today we're looking at the M4 number 2. So you prefer assault rifles. This is a loadout that you can use that makes the M4 behave a little bit more like an AR than a carbine. And uh, I actually use the M4 carbine here, not the M4A1, so I've got that burst in single fire. I'm using the ACOG, scope, the foregrip, and a heavy barrel. And uh, you can absolutely use this with the M4A1, not the M4. If you prefer, it'll work fine. You'll just have to burst manually yourself at medium range instead of uh, having the game there to do it for you automatic automatically, if you will. Uh, the reasoning behind this setup is, as I said, it basically makes the M4 behave a little bit more like an assault rifle. The foregrip obviously is a no-brainer. The ACOG scope gives you that sort of uh, medium range targeting ability. And the heavy barrel makes the gun a little bit more accurate. It does increase the recoil, but it makes the gun a little bit more accurate over long range, which is something you're going to want to do with the carbines if you want to be using them at, uh, at distance. So, you may be asking yourself, well, why would you want to do this? Surely if you want an assault rifle, you just play the assault kit, right? And then you have an assault rifle? And not some kind of carbine that you've set up to behave kind of like an assault rifle? Well, yes and no. I mean, obviously that's one solution. But uh, on a map like Kari Island, for example, which is what I'm playing here, there's a lot of vehicles, so the engineer class can be really useful for your team. You've got that anti-vehicle capability, you can repair your friendly vehicles. Uh, that's a very, it's a very useful thing to, uh, to have. Uh, dude run up behind me. I get killed twice in really quick uh, succession here by dudes behind me, which is always unfortunate. But oh well, shit happens. So on a map like Cargo Island, yeah, you've got all these vehicles and there's a good reason to be an engineer. Uh, to support your team's vehicles and try and take out the enemy vehicles. At the same time, however, Targa Island is a big, big map with lots of open fields and wide open spaces, and so the close range nature of a carbine is not necessarily going to suit this map very well. So, for that reason, you might want to play the engineer kit, but have a gun that has a little bit more range on it, handles a little bit more like an assault rifle, has, you know, a good punch at medium range, and can even do long distance, if need be. And that's pretty much the reasoning behind this setup. This is a good setup for large maps when you want to rock the engineer kit because there's a lot of vehicles around. That, that, that's about it. In this game, I don't actually get an enormous number of kills. I do get quite a lot of points, though, from arming bombs, completing my objectives, and so on. Um, I, I kind of become king of the assists here. But I decided to use this game, uh, despite the fact that I didn't get a huge number of kills with the weapon, because I do, uh, I do fire it quite a bit. Just for the most part, I don't actually kill people. I get, I get a million assists and suppression assists and all kinds of assists with assisting to assist my assists. But uh, it was a good, fast-paced game. I got a lot of the objectives done, and uh, so it sort of, it sort of had that going for it. So I decided to use this anyway, despite the fact that I didn't get an enormous number of kills with the, uh, with the gun we're actually looking at. And uh, it does have, in a moment here, something else that I wanted to uh, to show people playing the Engineer Kit that I think people don't tend to realize about this kit. That's 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 in a moment. I could have maybe cut this game down a little bit more. I left in a lot of me moving from objective to, oje to objective. And the reason I was perhaps more inclined to do that in this case, aside from the fact that I don't kill an enormous number of people, uh, so was... You can see me there hammering on that, uh, that burst fire to get sort of a full auto effect. Kill assist, 91. Suppression kill assist, 50. I may have only got the assist, but, you know, I, I still got, what, 141 points instead of the 100 I would have gotten for the kill, so... Tricks on whoever did get the kill, I guess. Um... I wanted to show a little bit of moving between objectives, because I cut that out a lot of times when I'm just sort of moving around the map and not killing a lot of people. But, uh... Move from cover to cover and all that stuff. It's a mistake that I hope if you've been following this series from the start and playing Battlefield 3, you would have uh, weaned out of your system by now. But it's a mistake that I see a lot of newer players making is to spend too much time in the open, standing in positions where they're able to be shot a lot. You always want to be only stopping if you're behind some kind of cover. And I think I did that pretty well in this game, although there I did get shot in the back of the head by a sniper. Thankfully buddy friend was there to help me to live, 
and then we can proceed forward onto victory with great glory. I really do like this map a lot. Uh, it's a lot of fun to attack on. Defending, uh, I, I really like attacking more than defending just in general because I like sort of uh, that, that aggressive play style, moving up, pushing on, getting shit done. But, um, yeah, I, I really enjoy attacking on this map. Especially, I've played some games of this map infantry only, and it is phenomenally awesome. If you guys haven't played infantry only much, definitely check it out. You might sort of think, you know, oh, but that, that kind of defeats the purpose of Battlefield if there's no vehicles. But no, it uh, really doesn't. Battlefield, with only infantry, is still very much Battlefield, and it's still a pretty awesome experience. Some of these sort of best games I've had in terms of team coordination and stuff like that have been infantry only matches. One in particular on this map that I really wish I'd recorded because we did uh, we did some awesome, awesome stuff. If you're noticing that uh, that this recording is looking a little bit better than most of them, that's because I'm recording on significantly higher settings here than I normally do. I sort of realized, huh? I can actually uh, I can actually keep my settings much higher than I have been and still have a smooth recording. I kind of figured fraps would kill my frame rate at these settings, but actually no. I, uh, I mean, it, it brings it down to about 35 frames a second instead of 50, but uh, that's that's still completely playable to me. 35 FPS is is okay with with the T cat. He's absolutely fine with that. Oh shit! I rhymed by accident. I'm, I'm a poet, and I realized that after I had accidentally created the rhyme. I don't know what happened here. I mean, I went to prepare that OAV. I know what happened there. But what confused me was and fuck this guy. He can't, he can't live there. But what confused me was... SNIPERS! No, what I was confused about was that team kill there. I get, I get blowed up by a friendly helicopter when I'm trying to take out that sniper. And I don't know how that even happened, because that helicopter was, first of all, not anywhere where it could have actually shot me, and second of all, this was not a friendly fire server, so I have no idea how that happened. I left in that, uh, that spawn menu because I pretty much spawn in this tank and then immediately start killing people. Um, I do get out of this tank really quickly. I would advise, if you're in this situation in the game, stay in the tank for, for, for serious. Don't get out and run up to the objective, which is what I did. You can, you can cover it just fine from the machine gun turret in the tank. The reason I did this is because I'm trying to show off the weapon, my, my carbine here. So I was like, well, I don't really want to be hanging out in this tank for too long. Um, but by all means, that was that was not something I would actually recommend doing from a, you know, I'm trying to accomplish victory kind of perspective. However, shooting people in the face at point-blank range is uh, is something I would recommend. That is always, always good, never a bad thing to do. Well, unless they're on your team and you're on a hardcore server, in which case you want to try to avoid that. You can see I'm leading my team right now, despite relatively few kills. Our guy in the attack chopper does end up taking it over because he gets, he goes 22 and 0 and outscores me as a result, but uh, not by as long as you might expect. Doing your objectives and even just getting assists and stuff like that uh, gets you a lot of points, you know, those MCOM destroys, you get 200 when you arm, you get 500 when it goes off, that's 700 points per MCOM, so, you know, if you destroy two or three MCOMs in a game, you are boosting your score by, you know, 1400, 2100 points, even more if you blow up more. Really, really, if you want to level up fast, a lot of people are like, yeah, just play like Hardcore fucking conquest on Metro 64, so you like kill people and shit, and then you'll level up fast. Um, if you want to level up fast without hating yourself forever, shit, something I forgot to talk about that I wanted to talk about just then. If you guys noticed, I actually ran back and picked up an enemy AT mine off the ground. That's something I think a lot of people don't realize engineers can do is you can pick up enemy AT mines. Uh, so just just keep that in mind when you're playing engineer. If you see those AT mines that are in there, whatever, pick them up, help your team out. Done. I don't know. You might actually also be able to pick up claymores. I'm not sure. Uh, you can approach a claymore if you're crouching or prone without setting it off, and also from behind. And I, th I think engineers can maybe also disarm claymores, but I'm not, I'm not sure about that. So, uh, if anybody knows, let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to know that. I'm bombing in. Anyway, as I was saying, if you want to level up fast, what was that guy even doing? I, I mean, I guess he was defending the objective. But what I mean is, why isn't he now going to defuse? Why is he just? Why is he just chilling? Why, why is he just... His team does end up defusing, though. Um, we arm again, and then we win. That's what happens there. Anyway, we need to get this out before the video ends. If you want to level up fast without hating yourself, just play Rush or Conquest and actually do the motherfucking objectives and play your class and repair and heal dudes and shit. And you can level up really, really quickly doing that. You don't... You don't need... I mean, don't get me wrong, you won't get your, like, 
800 fucking absurd score per minute unless you are basically padding by playing on these absurd uh, servers that are just massive meat grinders. But if you want to level up quickly without hating yourself, just do your objectives, play your quest, that's it. Anyway, as always, guys, let me know what you thought of the video. Until tomorrow, Triple T Cat out.